Hello again and welcome back to SFF 180. It is Monday morning, June the 26th. And time once again for the mailbag. Hello, I'm back at last. So sorry. I've missed you guys terribly. You have no idea. So sorry I've been gone for so long. I have been doing a lot of reading. So there is, I know I always promise this, but there is content coming. Uh, it's just uh, there has been a lot, a lot going on uh, lately in terms of real life stuff, uh, not least of which if you've been paying attention to the news, the entire kind of southwest or southeast actually of the country uh, has been in this record breaking heat wave, which was preceded, at least where I live, by tremendous storms, high winds, um, horrible rain. I lost uh, almost an entire tree uh, in my yard. That was fun. Could have come crashing through the roof. Uh, thankfully it didn't, but that's definitely a tree I'm going to have to get rid of next month. Hooray for that. And then there were the four days that we were without power. Completely without power. And so, uh, you know, whether that pun intended, pun and probably inevitable, <laughs> uh, with the aid of a generator, went out and had to buy a whole lot of equipment. So, you know, $1,500 later, we, you know, had at least some power, at least in terms of a generator, power cords, uh, extension cords, and things like that. But uh, yeah, wow. But it was only four days for us. And there are people now who are going on their second week in this area with no power at all. And I don't know how they're alive, because we're looking at, you know, temperatures well into triple digits. And so, hmm, yeah, it's here. The climate crisis is here. Uh, but here we're going to uh, try to at least ease our way through it with some new books. Okay, so let's get right into it, except for, wait a minute, I don't want to miss this one announcement, because it's actually really cool. I will be, as always, at ArmadillaCon in Austin the weekend of August 4th, to the 6th, so a little over a month from now, and I will be interviewing, this is very exciting this year, and among among the other programming, whatever I end up doing, uh, my interview this year will be with Corey Doctorow, special guest, and I am super excited about that. You know, last year I interviewed Fonda Lee. I think Armadillicon is just kind of wanting this to be an annual thing for, you know, all the guests of honor and the special guests, you know, get an onstage interview every year. And, you know, I'm now looks like being pegged as one of the interviewers, you know, every year now, which I, which I'm fine with. Uh, I really, really enjoy that. And it means now annually, at least once a year, you'll get a great interview, author interview on the channel here. And this year it's Cory Doctorow. Yay. Okay, so that's that announcement. All right, so without further ado, we have actually kind of a modest mailbag uh, this time, but it's all going to be cool stuff. Let's check it out, shall we? So I'm going to start this time with a package from kind of a mystery publisher. I don't know who this is from or what it is. Hmm. Okay, this is very exciting to open up with. Uh, this is in from Pyre. And uh, this is the second volume uh, in the Lightspeed Trilogy. It's Beyond the Reach of Earth. Uh, this comes out uh, on July the 18th. And the reason I'm really excited about it is that this publicist just sent me uh, the first book in this trilogy, like very recently, uh, called Beyond the Hallowed Sky. And so I think Pyre is playing catch up because this has already been out, I think, for a couple of years in the UK, but now the US editions are available. And yes, yeah, so I'm very, very happy to see like book two hot on its heels because that makes this very bingeable, doesn't it? But uh, yeah, let's see what it says that I can read without spoilers. Um, okay, uh, Beyond the Reach of Earth is a lavish exploration of a wild, star-faring future. Ken McLeod is a fearless extrapolator who has mastered the mind-boggling moves most dear to science fiction readers, from alien terraformers to faster-than-light submarines, uh, to robot spies. I have no idea how a faster-than-light submarine would work. But uh, anyway, uh, this twisty thriller, latest in the Lightspeed trilogy, is a must-read. Uh, let's see, the invention of faster-than-light technology has brought great opportunity, but also great danger. Okay, and then uh, at that point, a spoiler start for book one, so I'll stop right there. But anyway, Beyond the Reach of Earth, uh, available uh, July the 18th uh, from Pyre by Ken McLeod. Always really, really happy to see good old hard SF. Okay, but anyway, this one now, this looks like it might be an angry robot book. 
Okay, here's one that was actually on my anticipated SF for 2023 list uh, way back when. Uh, this is called Lessons in Birdwatching. The author is Honey Watson. Uh, this is going to be available on August the 8th from Angry Robot, and it says it's a darkly comic, politically charged novel set in a post-Earth future where beings, human and otherwise, careen towards annihilation in service of zealotry and nihilism alike. Okay, well, yes, definitely darkly comic, if it's comic at all. All right, then, uh, it says it will appeal to fans of Dune, Nine Fox, Gambit, and A Memory Called Empire. All right. During their temporary research post on APEC, A-P-E-C-H, a planet ravaged by a time-distorting illness, Wilhelmina Ming and four other elite students of the Christian Empire have witnessed such illogical brutality that they've resorted to psychedelic antidepressants and group sex to take the edge off. <laughs> After a night of indulgence following a gruesome execution, they wake to find an oblique warning in the form of an impaled corpse dangling from the exterior of their residence. That's grim. Okay, when their subsequent investigation uncovers a web of collusion and conspiracy in the ranks of their own diplomatic corps, the envoys find themselves caught in the middle of a bloody civil war. As bodies pile up above ground, a deranged fanatic stokes an existential threat below, coaxing the embers of a forgotten god and its temporal virus to life. Wow. Okay. Um... Sounds like a bit heavy going, but if, if this is definitely your bag, then um, Lessons in Bird Watching by Honey Watson, like I said, will be again available Angry Robot on August the 8th. Now, this next one is in from Clash Books, and I am absolutely thrilled to get my hands on this. This is Everything the Darkness Eats by Eric LaRocca, a rising star in uh, horror, extreme horror, you might say. Um, let's see. And this uh, was this came out on June the 6th. Okay, and um, uh, this is the arc. I, I think the finished copy looks uh, slightly different from this, but it says, An insidious darkness threatens to devastate a rural New England village when occult forces are conjured and when bigotry is left unrestrained. After a recent string of disappearances in a small Connecticut town, a grieving widower with a grim secret is drawn into a dangerous ritual of dark magic by a powerful and mysterious older gentleman named Hart Crowley. I think that would be a dead giveaway right from the very beginning. Meanwhile, a member of local law enforcement tasked with uncovering the culprit responsible for the bizarre disappearances soon begins to learn of a current of unbridled hatred simmering beneath the guise of the town's idyllic community. A hatred that will eventually burst and forever change the lives of those who once found peace in the quiet town of Henley's Edge. From the Bram Stoker Award-nominated and author of the viral sensation Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, Everything the Darkness Eats is a haunting supernatural thriller from a new and exciting voice in genre fiction. Wow. And it is available now from Clash Books. And next up we have this one from Random Penguin. Yeah, Random Penguin generally, but Delray specifically. This is Silver Nitrate. It's the new book by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, and I'm really excited about this one because... Obviously, it's going to have something to do with film, uh, old film in particular. So uh, let's uh, see what we have. Um, yeah, Montserrat has always been overlooked. She's a talented sound editor, but she's left out of the boys club running the film industry in 90s Mexico City. And she's all but invisible to her best friend Tristan. Or Tristan, a charming, if faded, soap opera star, even though she's been in love with him since childhood. Then Tristan discovers his new neighbor is the cult horror director Abel Urueta, and the legendary auteur claims he has a way to change their lives, even if his tales of a Nazi occultist imbuing magic into highly volatile silver nitrate stock sounds like sheer fantasy. The magic film was never finished, which is why Urueta swears his career vanished overnight. He is cursed. Now the director wants Montserrat and Tristan to help him shoot the missing scene and lift the curse. But Montserrat soon notices a dark presence following her, and Tristan begins seeing the ghost of his ex-girlfriend. As they work together to unravel the mystery of the film and the obscure occultist who once roamed their city, Montserrat and Tristan might find out that sorcerers and magic are not only the stuff of movies. And uh, that is Silver Nitrates by Silvia Moreno-Garcia, and it will be available July the 18th. And next up, we've got a couple of packages from the Macmillan Company. 
And the first one of these is the finished copy in hardcover of a new book in the Nightfire line. Very excited to have this. This is Mavefly uh, by C.J. Lead. And uh, yeah, this one sounds uh, pretty uh, grisly indeed. It says, by day, Mavefly works at the happiest place in the world as every child's favorite ice princess. By the neon glow of the Sunset Strip, Maeve haunts the dive bars with a drink in one hand and a book in the other, imitating her misanthropic literary heroes. But when Gideon Green, her best friend's brother, moves to town, he awakens something dangerous within her, and the world she knows suddenly shifts beneath her feet. Untethered, Maeve ditches her discontented act and tries on a new persona, a bolder, bloodier one inspired by the pages of American Psycho. Step aside, Patrick Bateman. It's Maeve's turn with the knife. Maeve Fly is a provocative and unforgettable debut that is both a blood-soaked love letter to L.A. and a gleeful send-up of iconic horror villains. It says serial killing is no longer a boys' club. Right on! So this is available now in hardcover from Tor Nightfire, Mayfly. And next, also from Tor, Tor.com, that is, uh, another finished copy in hardcover, one I'm thrilled to death to have. I've been very much looking forward to reading this one. I mean, I've had it like as a neck galley arc for forever, but always good to get the physical copy. This is The Archive Undying, another debut novel. Uh, it's on sale tomorrow in hardcover. The author is Emma Mieko Kandon. And it says, um, oh, well, maybe it's not a debut novel because they're, they're saying it's, she's a best-selling author. Okay, well then, oh, right on. Okay, she, she wrote a Star Wars novel. Okay, then. All right. Well, that will get anybody on the bestseller list. Uh, uh, the Archive Undying is a brain-expanding mashup of anime and science fiction. On the surface level, this is a novel that contains some of genre's favorite tropes. Giant robots, AI gone wrong, lovable characters who make bad personal decisions. But upon closer inspection, Archive is nothing short of a full-bore tour de force that delves deeply into issues of mortality, identity, queerness, and above all, the tyranny of having a human body. The Archive Undying is the first volume of Emma Mako Kandon's Downworld sequence, a sci-fi series where AI deities and brutal police states clash, wielding giant robots steered by pilot priests with corrupted bodies. When the robotic god of Quan Mo went mad, it destroyed everything it touched. It killed its priests, its city, and all its wondrous works. But in its final death throes, the god brought one thing back to life, its favorite child. Sunai. For the seventeen years since, Sunai has walked the land like a ghost, unable to die, unable to age, and unable to forget the horrors he's seen. He's run as far as he can from the wreckage of his faith, drowning himself in drink, drugs, and men. But when Sunai wakes up in the bed of this one man he never should have slept with, he finds himself on a path straight back into the world of gods and machines. Riotous and fast-paced, the Archive Undying is also profoundly layered and poignant. All right, then. And so there you are, The Archive Undying, available tomorrow from Tor.com. Yeah, sounds like it is an action fest. And last, but by no means least, I have this uh, kind of heavyish box here, and this says, it tells me it comes in from Soho Press. Okay, well, this was really exciting to get. Um, remember, well, you may or may not remember, because it's been so long. <laughs> but uh, I recently got the arc for Eventide Water City. Uh, this is by Chris McKinney. It's the second volume in a kind of future noir series following Midnight Water City. Well, now so has ha has sent me the finished copy in hardcover uh, of book two, which I guess is available now. And then they have sent me the arc for book three, which I believe comes out in December, Sunset Water City. So this is fantastic. Very, very happy to have all of this. So let's go ahead and uh, read the cell sheet, shall we? It says, Chris McKinney's acclaimed uh, fusion of sci-fi and hardball mystery in Midnight Water City makes an epic return in 2023 with the final two books in the series, Eventide Water City, the propulsive sequel publishing this July. Uh, let's see, to be precise, July the 11th. And Sunset Water City, yes, the dramatic conclusion coming uh, in December, December the 5th. Uh, all right, let's see. What can I say about it? It's a riveting cyber noir police procedural. 
Midnight Water City about a synthetic detective investigating the murder of the venerated scientist who single-handedly prevented a global apocalypse by stopping an incoming asteroid. In Water City, a near-future world of underwater cities, household hibernation chambers, and dystopian-level wealth disparities, McKinney crafted a darkly original vision of our global destiny inspired by the climate crisis, Trumpian politics, and the ongoing 30-meter telescope controversy in his native Hawaii. Well, that's interesting. Uh, combining his cinematic prose with elements from the great works of Philip K. Dick and George Orwell, Midnight Water City earned its place on best speculative mystery lists. I guess someone is out there making those. And set the uh, stage for an engrossing trilogy, which now reaches a thrilling conclusion with the final two books publishing in 2023. Okay, and I won't, uh, you know, uh, yammer on too much about details in that, so as to avoid spoilers. But anyway, yes, this does look like it is uh, going to be a very, very uh, rich trilogy full of fantastic world building and some good suspense and action. And so Eventide Water City on the 11th of July, Sunset Water City on the 5th of December. So look for me to do, you know, one of my, uh, like a full trilogy video review of all of these. That could be a lot of fun. And there you have it. That's all I've got for this episode of The Mailbag. Thank you all for joining me. I hope I wasn't too rusty with this one. I hope I did okay. It's been a while, and once again, I am so sorry. But, you know, barring any more catastrophic natural events, <laughs> uh, I, I do not plan to let this happen again. I am ready to be back in the saddle on the regular doing new content because this right here is what makes me happy in life. All right. So you guys know the drill. Light up the comments. Let me know which of these looks most interesting and exciting to you and which you would like to see me prioritize for review. Otherwise, if you enjoyed watching, please slam that like button, share the video far and wide with all of your SFF rating friends, and above all, please subscribe if you have not done so. That is how the channel grows. You can also support the channel at my Tee Public store and at my Patreon, where recruits into Wink's Army occasionally get little perks like early access to some of my videos, but I will say that the main purpose of the Patreon, and for which I am extremely grateful to all the contributors, is that it helps me pay Matt Olson, my brilliantly talented and gifted channel artist who does all of my beautiful and unique thumbnails for me. So I want to thank all of those folks for their additional support. I want to thank all the rest of you guys for being the very best viewers in all of BookTube. And until I see all of you next time, please stay safe, stay healthy, stay cool, stay hydrated, stay alive, and happy reading.